So I wanted to share on the different stages of a heart awakening, the initial stages. This is ultimately the journey from identifying as the egoic mind and the small personality, the separate self, and living from your sacred heart. Not only do you begin first an empowerment journey where you begin to unconditionally love yourself, but it even transcends the sense of self because you realize on this journey that you are the love. The love that you are emanating, that is your true identity and this is, you're no longer the small separate self. And so you begin to dance in both worlds. Partly as this separate human self, but no longer identified as the separate self. You are now eventually and gradually identifying as the unconditional love and, and presence that animates this being that you have the privilege of experiencing in this lifetime. Every soul awakening to love is different. This is moving from fear and lack and scarcity into the divine presence and the essence of love and the abundance of that which you are. And oftentimes this can cause a lot of tower moments and a lot of turbulence because the ego kind of rides on top of these core wounds that we carry. And these core wounds need to be looked at, otherwise they continue to repeat patterns where the ego can easily latch on and keep you from going inward. So this journey is about going inward and connecting with your true divine essence And so the first phase of this is your old way of life no longer fulfills you. So you recognize that that there is a sense of longing or there is a sense of lack. And in this stage, usually the abandonment wound is triggered. And this is where seeking external validation outside of yourself really kicks up because the ego overcompensates for this feeling of lack and for not feeling safe, for not feeling loved. So to avoid the feeling of rejection or loneliness or abandonment or not being good enough or not being worthy, You seek external validation, and this validation can be in the form of relationships, and it often is. It can also be in the form of chasing career success or money or anything outside of yourself. So it's going to resonate with everyone a little differently. But the ego always needs more. There's never enough. And so this chase becomes incessant and it just becomes ongoing because the ego always wants more, more, more. When you start to make more money, it needs then more money. When you, you know, it's never satisfied. It's always looking for more. It's always rooted in lack. It's always rooted in scarcity. It's fear-driven. And a heart awakening is moving from the ego to the heart. So no longer living in lack, scarcity, or fear, and being able to live from the abundance and the love and the peace and the safety that already resides within you. So the thing that keeps the cycles repeating is the avoidance of looking at all of the different fears that are bubbling up. So basically avoiding your shadow. So trying to put a band-aid on things when they bubble up, when things are triggered. Trying to put an external band-aid on something that is happening internally will keep you 
suffering in cycles, chasing outside of yourself through the form of some kind of external validation in hopes to achieve that sense of safety, security, love, support, abundance, whatever it is, keeping you seeking, seeking, seeking outside of yourself. And there's nothing wrong with seeking because it is part of the journey. It is all divinely guided. Nothing here is happening on accident. So you can embrace all parts of it, even the parts that don't feel good, because none of it is happening on accident. It's all happening because your soul designed it that way. It's all happening to help you come into realization of the love that you are. And I know this can sound super annoying depending on where you're at in the journey because your ego is so convinced, so convinced that if it could just get that carrot that it keeps dangling in front of you and it could just have that carrot that then you would be at peace and you would be happy and you would be fulfilled and you would have everything that you need. And this is not that journey. This is not that lifetime for you. This is the lifetime if you're on this journey that you go inward and the cycles are broken as you come into alignment with your true divine essence. And again, it sounds annoying if you're stuck in the egoic cycles right now where the ego is grasping desperately seeking outside of yourself for that next fix in order for you to feel good enough or feel lovable or feel worthy or feel abundant or safe or secure. And this isn't to say that we don't have 3D experiences that reflect back to situations that would cause a desire to arise to better our circumstances. Of course that occurs. That's part of the creation process. However, You have to recognize that your environment that you're looking out to, the world that you're looking out to, the external world of form, is a reflection of your past. It's a creation from your inner world. Your consciousness creates your externalized world. So if you're stuck in the loop of looking externally outside of yourself to try to figure out what you need to fix in your life in order to fix you, in order to help you feel better, more supported, more loved, more abundant, more worthy, more successful, more admired, whatever way you're seeking validation, recognizing that your external world is a mirror. And if you're going to the externalized world of form, you're doing everything backwards. You're staying stuck in cycles because you're looking at the reflection, trying to change the reflection as within, so without, as above, so below. The world is a reflection of your consciousness, a reflection of your point of focus and your awareness and your point of consciousness. Your perception of reality creates your reality. So if your perception of reality creates your reality and then you look at your reality and you say, well, this isn't it, this isn't what I want, this isn't what I desire, this isn't what's in alignment for me, and then you go out into the externalized world and try to fix it, you're trying to fix the reflection. The reflection is just information, something to be aware of, of what internally needs to shift in order for the externalized world to change. But the ego will keep you seeking in the externalized world. The ego is very much associated with masculine energy. The masculine energy is focused externally and on results and the externalized world of form and is the energy that activates and manifests into the 3D world. The feminine energy, the feminine essence is very receptive. It's intuitive. It's, it's the flow of life. And so when we talk about masculine and feminine energy, this is about aligning your feminine and masculine within, but not in the way most teachings out there would have you think. This isn't about aligning with, um, let's say, a man per se, 
when you talk about masculine energy because these are not gender specific. Masculine energy and feminine energy exist within all of us. This is about coming into union and alignment with your masculine and your feminine energy, meaning that your physical reality and your inner reality become um, in harmony, in balance. And in truth, they always already are because if your externalized world, let's say, is a complete mess, it's usually... Well, not usually. It's a reflection of what needs to be cleaned up and purified within. So even then, they're still in quote-unquote harmony. It's just they're both kind of in a disharmony, not the kind of harmony that's going to breed the union quality virtues such as love and harmony and peace and ease and balance. So they are... They're out of harmony, but they're still a perfect fit when you're in the distorted cycles. They're out of harmony, but they're, but they're still perfect reflections of each other, if that makes sense. They're always two sides of the same coin. So basically what I'm saying is by the time your externalized world really clicks into alignment for you, and really starts to merge with your heart core desires, your inner soul urges and desires, by the time that physical world begins to click into alignment, you will have become a whole new version of you inwardly. And it will simply be a byproduct and reflection of your inner feminine essence. Your masculine externalized world will be a reflection of your inner inner world. As within, so without. So in a sense, when you talk about feminine and masculine energy, those two coming into harmonious union is a key part of this journey, but not in the way that most of the teachings and trainings out there have you focused This is about you coming into alignment with your feminine essence. And your feminine essence is your true divine essence. It's your presence. It's your beingness. It is your divine nature. The love that you are. And so what happens for a lot of people on this journey is... You seek, seek, seek love outside of yourself. But ultimately, you are love itself. And so this little silly game is, it's kind of a, it's kind of a cosmic joke because the entire time that you've been seeking love or admiration or acceptance or validation or approval outside of yourself, the whole time you're it. The whole time you're it, which is why you can never find it in the externalized world of form. It's just why you can never find it outside of yourself. Because you are it. And the paradox is that as you come into realization that you are already it, that you are already the love that you seek, which is what this whole journey is mirroring back to you or at least setting you up to look at over and over and over again until it starts to click. The paradox is that as you realize you are it, you also realize that everything else and everyone else is it Two, there is no difference between the unconditional love that you are and the unconditional love that everybody else is. And so you start to merge into this unity consciousness, this oneness consciousness. You go from separation consciousness into unity consciousness. 
But what initially starts as an empowerment journey and a self-love journey and an honoring of self and an honoring of your own physical human self, your form, right? Because your form is divinity as well. It's divinely created to reject it or to not love it or to su- to not honor it or, and not respect it and to allow certain things in your life and things like that and to abandon yourself over and over is basically disowning a part of God because you you are divinity. You are it and everything else is too. But what starts as an empowerment and self-love journey eventually reveals that there was actually no journey, quote-unquote journey to begin with because you are already it. However, the stages of this heart awakening often happens at a pace that is comfortable for you and not comfortable as if you're not going to experience the suffering or the ego death or the dark nights of the soul, but it's going to be perfectly divinely guided for you. Each little lotus flower that opens, right? Each little petal that opens is opening just at the right time for you. And it's all divinely guided. And so the first step on this uh, phase, when you are in the grasping and the seeking and the externalized validation, is to go within and sit with the shadows, sit with the fears, sit with what comes up and allow what is to be there. Face the darkness. And when I say darkness, this means the things that you don't want to shine your conscious light of awareness on. That's what's referred to as the shadow. This is working with dark feminine energy and transformation. Is allowing yourself to allow the shadow to be there. Allow the fear to be there. Allow the hurt. Allow the feelings of loneliness or abandonment to be there. Not because you need to wallow in it, but that's okay. There is zero judgment. The only thing that's going to pop up and judge this process is your ego. The ego's language is judgment. So however this unfolds, if you have to wallow in it, wallow in it. But it's not quote unquote necessary. You'll be guided. So whatever is coming up for you is already perfect. So this process is not something you do It's something you surrender to. And so you can be a complete hot mess for months, completely isolated in hermit mode, in solitude, and be a hot mess, crying like a baby every other minute, always easily moved to tears and releasing, and that is beautiful. Crying in the grocery store, crying in the car, crying to music, like who knows? Tears and crying is actually a sign of a heart awakening. And it's all beautiful. And the ego is going to be the one that judges it. So allow it to be there. Be aware that this is what's unfolding for you. That you're finally going to face what has kept you running from yourself for so long. For lifetimes. That this is the lifetime now which is why you're on this journey. This is the lifetime where you face all of those shadows and you stop running and you stop seeking outside of yourself and you come into the realization that you are already home. You are already it. You are already the love that you seek. There's a quote I really like from the Wizard of Oz. Um, Glinda, the good witch, tells Dorothy towards the end, You've always been able to go home. You've always had the ability to go home to Kansas. And the tin man asks, well, why didn't you tell her this from the beginning? And she said, I couldn't. She needed to figure it out for herself. She wouldn't believe me. So honor your journey because this is it. Honor the process. Honor what's coming up. 
honor the fact that you're being taken what feels like sometimes through the darkness and through the trenches with your heart and your soul. Allow yourself to feel the emotions. Allow it to bubble up. Allow it to surface. Be there. Be present with it. No longer suppressing it. No longer running from it. Allow yourself to purge and cleanse and release and purify your being. As these shadows are looked at and allowed and respected and loved and you bring conscious loving awareness to these parts of yourself that you've been running from likely your whole life and even lifetimes you transmute them this is where the alchemy occurs and this is where you're left after the dust settles with the peace and clear vision to be able to see yourself clearly as a divine being for the love that you are and this immediately begins to transform your entire world and experience because when you can fully see the light within you and you're able to realize your true divine nature you're able to see it reflected out into everything and everyone that you see At a certain point in the journey, the seeking is definitely a catalyst for moving this process forward. There's nothing wrong with it. And at a certain point, you begin to realize how futile it is. So recognize where you're chasing the love. Because it's a blessing. It's there to show you that that's not it. If you would like support on your journey and you're ready to fully claim your divine sovereignty as a divinely worthy woman, I invite you to check out Embody the Empress, which is my divine feminine monthly immersion. You can check out all the details in the caption below this video. And until next time, I hope this finds you well. Namaste.